Hey YouTube, coming at you with my little first, my little, my first Little Cup Galar team. Uh, yesterday I showcased a subscribers and I used two of the three the same. Uh, one because Bronzer I already knew was amazing because I've played with it for since the beginning of Little Cup existed. It was always top meta. Uh, so I knew Bronzer and then Purloin just showed how strong it is, how glassy it is, but how strong it is with those sucker punches and night slashes. And then I was looking through a third and then I was just... Um, this is before I was looking for core breakers. I was kind of just going down my list like what do I want to use and I had the Pika Libre and I'm like oh let's check the rankings and it wasn't on the rankings I'm like uh, okay let's just test it out because I know uh, flying press is an insane move so let's just use it uh, there are like core breakers like the back is going to have a lot of problems like Cottony and stuff like that uh, but you got two very glossy Pokemon in the back um, and this on the lead so uh, obviously super slow on this come in here you're going to see me throw up Thunder Punch a few mistakes. Flying Press, they're both basically the same energy. I think they are the same energy. Um, yeah, they're the same energy. But Flying Press does so much more damage than Thunder Punch. The only reason you thunder, use Thunder Punch is in situations like this, where it is super effective. So I had to shield up one because I overfarmed a ton. There's a Thunder Punch. That one shots. Um, like, I think I throw a Thunder Punch here. That's No, this is not correct. A, a Flying Press base would one-shot here. Uh, but I use the Thunder Punch, and it does not one-shot, and then they take me out. So Flying Press would have easily taken out there. That's not. That's just me not knowing the typings and... Not typings, but the strengths yet. Uh, they quit with Witzcatch, which is an interesting one, because Witzcatch would have had a good matchup against Bronzer, and they had a shield advantage. So I don't know certain why they quit. But here we go with the Mirror Match. Oh, I didn't even notice how underpowered that Bronzer was. That was a super underpowered Bronzer. Uh, they end up catching the payback on the Purloin, but shield anyways. This Purloin is powered up. Bronzer is very underpowered there. Um, so I know they're not at a play rough yet. So I take the Night Slash, but then of course they get the boost. And they're already doing a ton of damage, so this is not a great scenario to be in. Um, they shield the first Night Slash, and I do get to the next one. And the thing with Purloin, if you haven't used it yet, it is very glossy. Uh, so that... Night Slash <laughs> resisted, takes it out. I now have a two shield advantage for the low tad. And again, I'm going Flying Press here because yes, Thunder Punch is only neutral because it has half grass, half water. So neutral, Flying Press is neutral and Flying Press does that. So insane amount of damage there. Clefable. It's so funny because I actually tagged this as, so they're staying in uh, as a charmer against a steel. So I'm like, okay, what do you have in the back? This, I'm pretty sure this is a team that had three evolved Pokemon. And this is my first time doing Little Cup with like everything here. And so when I very easily beat this, I actually tagged the title as don't use evolved Pokemon. And then I used Diggersby and Drapion next time and they dominated for me. So it's not, it's less don't you, it's not don't use evolved Pokemon because Mandibuzz is also high ranked. Um, there is the offset in a few things here. Um, for those of you who've never used Evolved Pokemon in this little cup. Um, as you're going to see here, just Gyarados is going to get deleted because it's a weak to electric. Uh, so that's not great for it. Yes, the Evolved Pokemon hit harder, but they're also way glassier, right? Because instead of having to evolve like level whatever, 20, 30, 40 plus on the Bronzers and Shuckles, you have like a level like 8 <laughs> or 9 Pokemon. So much like the main, just again, think of it from the realistics, the like perspective of the main series games. Again, I can only think back as far as like Pokemon Red because that's what I played. But like when you, you theoretically, I mean, you couldn't evolve like Venus or in that at level 36, but then you, some opponents would have like a level like 20 Venus or whatever. Um, there's a big difference between like a level 20 Venus or um, and level 36 Venus or right. So Everything in the little cup when you're down low in like the for the evolved evolved is going to be very glassy. So there's some evolved again does work. I use Diggersby and Drapion that will be coming up soon. Um, so just keep in mind for that. Anyways, here's Shaco. So here's the night. Here's the uh, not night slash problem. Here is the stat product pro problem. Uh, moves absolute garbage. Rock Blast does almost nothing, but Flying Press that can basically almost one-shot anything in this meta does absolutely nothing. 
and they have a Diggersby in the back, uh, and it's Mudshot, so Mudshot's doing super effective. So I am double weak to ground too. So I don't know if this team comp makes the most sense, but they're three just very strong Pokemon. Uh, can't get to. I don't think I got to move despite the leg there, and then it's just like I'm I'm done this matchup. So there's no point of shielding. Uh, so we get taken out there. Okay, Perloin. So Perloin does have a good matchup because it has Sucker Punch and it has Night Slash, both hitting super effective against Bronzer. So even with an amazing typing, the problem is. Bronzer is still very tanky, so I can easily take that. I forced them to dump their energy, and now they get into Wooper, but I'm already at a Night Slash. And again, this won't one-shot because it's very tough to one-shot just with like a four to five turn fast move in this league. Um, everything is glossy though, but it's still do like 50, 60%. So these Sucker Punches are adding up a ton because this thing is buffed like crazy this season. So uh, the buffed punches plus the night slash is really adding up here now i only have two pokemon weak to ground but getting two shields is more than sufficient for me and at this point i think i'm just basically going to sacrifice bronzer i'm just going to try and take a move i think i can live again super effective or not um i, I think i could have probably eh, it would have been close i'm actually surprised i shield because i thought i would save shields for the pika libre but i am at a move here and this should one shot what is okay? It does not quite one shot. Come into Thunder Shock down. Um, Drift Loon comes in, so this is a super effective Thunder Punch. I assume any like pretty much any super effective move on a Pokemon not Shuckle and Bronzer is going to one shot. Um, that is essentially how this meta plays out. Super effective moves will one shot. Uh, they boost here, but there's already too low, so it doesn't matter. Super effective moves one shot. Regular moves do like seventy percent, sixty percent to a regular Pokemon. Um, the the evolved Pokemon. Oh, I guess Felix isn't Felix isn't an evolved Pokemon, but Pokemon with not great stat product for this that they're not the babies. Um, really take a lot of damage with the fast moves, stuff like that. So in my top teams video, um, uh, not top teams video. My this we have a stat proc pro, stat product problem video. I said that typings don't matter. Um, and I I. But I also prefaced it by saying, like, obviously, super effective moves do, and like, normal moves do, like, 50, 60%. So, super effective moves will do an insane amount. Understanding that, I still said typings don't matter. Someone in the comments said, it does matter because fast move damage does so much here. So, as you saw with, like, the tackles on Bronzer, and as you see with these sucker punches on Purloin, uh, they really do add up these fast moves. And if you can add up in this meta the fast moves quickly, you basically just put everything in one shot range, right? Because every, like I said, charge moves do minimum like 50%. So if you can put them in just 50% range with your fast move, you can one shot them with your charge move. So from that perspective, yes, typing does, ma does matter. The fast move matters. There is a lot of, it's it's not as simple as like, just get the stat product with like decent move sets. Like that's a, that's a basic baseline thing that would work. But if you want to get a little more in the analysis perspective, um, yes, it does matter your typing. It matters your stat products. It matters your move set. Um, like here, but like here's the here's the thing. So like Wooper will have a good matchup against Bronzer and, and will win because the Mud Bombs will do a lot. But like this is a non-Shadow Wooper, so that one does not even do over fifty percent. And Wooper is pretty glossy, so I would not be surprised if they shield this payback. So this like. This is the stat product problem that I'm talking about. You have a super effective mud boy um, throwing super effective moves, and they need to throw three in between the non-stab tackles and a non-stab payback. I put what should be an absolutely one-sided matchup into the deep red that I can just come and farm down on, right? So this is why I said like we have a stat product problem with these Pokemon. Uh, I still think that it is easy just to like use those two Pokemon if you have them, Shuckle and Bronzer. I think I think Shuckle obviously dominates because of its b insane bulk, but the move set is so so not move set. The attack is so so bad that it really limits um, sort of its overall playability and its damage it can do to your opponent. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're going to use it, but. Yeah, for sure. Um, those two Pokemon are going to dominate 
in, in this meta. Um, and here, they get two moves off quickly, so they burn both my shields. So I'm looking, can I get to a two play roughs? I don't think so. So I am going to bait this Night Slash. Again, I don't bait often, but when I bait, it's usually because it's one of my only win cons here. So get the bait on the Night Slash. Now it gets to the player off. This will one shot for the win. Bronzer into Wooper. Again, we just kind of saw this. Uh, it's a Mud Boy. Yes, it has Mud Shot. Yes, it has Mud Bomb. But this match will be, will be closer than they want it to be for what should be a very dominating matchup against the Steel. And again, that's just kind of the problems on um, just this league, right? Everything's so, so glassy. Um, so yeah, this one they do shield because they know, like they know it won't, won't one shot, but it'll put them pretty close. Um, and then they decide to body slam thinking that I would like maybe match shields, but nope, I've got two very, very glossy Pokemon in the back. Uh, yeah. So if you're using this team or if you're using something like this, I kind of talked it in the team building phase here. Um, if you're going to use glossy Pokemon like Purloin or Pika Libre, one, you need to build it with a bulkier Pokemon like Bronzer and two, you can't really use those shields on bronzer you really need to save them for this pokemon i remember taking like a maybe it's in here like an aqua tail or something with purloin and it did like 90 percent. i'm just like oh that's unfortunate speaking about unfortunate that is not a good matchup um so i get off what is a couple flying presses here uh enough to take it low which actually helps me out huge because my lose con is just getting out, is just getting charmed down. However, if they take me low enough here, um, I'm actually surprised I'm throwing this because I thought, unless they have a shield, I'm trying to grab the shield, and I'm just taking it out. I thought I would come and farm with the sucker punches because I need a play rough here. Yeah, so I'm just going to lose this. What I should have done, I can already see that loss coming. I was like, what am I doing? I need to. That, that's actually just like a pretty poor play on my part, quite honestly. Um, there's only one win con here. You need to get to a play rough. You need to get to basically a play rough before this comes in because you're just going to get charmed and taken out here. So I should not have thrown this move at all. They're running Confusion, which was resisted by Purloin too. So I should have just like gone down with this energy, come in, done like seven or how many, I don't know how many from this range, like five sucker punches to have a move coming out. And then I could have got the play rough off here. As we saw, play rough does do... A ton of damage and then i probably could have night slashed uh what is the rest of this here because i would have taken this to the red and then like one or two more sucker punches and then i'm at probably like one if i farm correctly i'm at night slash and i take out to win there so that is like a very poor read on my part and it's funny because i read it here like like don't throw the charge move like you need to get the farm and then in the moment i throw the charge move. i'm like no that's that's not right so um, yeah, you just need to be aware of your win cons and just how, like, again, I got a charmer against a, a glassy dark to begin with in a small league where I'll be taken out in like three or four fast moves. Of course you need to have energy on it. Like that's a, that's a very easy read that I did not make during the game. So, um, you got it. Yeah. You got to make that, you got to make that read in the moment there. But so far, good alignment on this. Uh, their fairy on my steel, their ghost on my dark. We'll see what's in the back. I have shield advantage, so this should be pretty easy. It is a shuckle. So, yes, I know payback is neutral and uh, heavy slam is super effective and heavy slam is a cheaper move. So, obviously, heavy slam is what you should throw. I don't know why I threw payback. Just full of crap decisions in these battles. But... This is, what, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I was trying to allude to in my game yesterday. A super effective, same type attack bonus, heavy slam that would basically, in that scenario, one-shot everything is doing like, what? 10% to a shuckle? And again, they have rock throw, they have rock blast, nothing, that they have a sh crappy attack, um... Garibald's even worse. Like, it does not matter. I will obviously live. Um, half of the problem is just how bad this move is compared to Flying Press. Here we are with Flying Press, a non-stab move, and oh, that does more than 10%. And that's why I like Pika Libre, because Flying Press, neutral situations, 
against not bronzer and against non shuckle is going to like one shot most things it is a very 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 strong move um obviously unfortunately not everyone has access to a pika libre so understood don't even know what i'm going to put in the thumbnail and title Perloin went in yesterday, so it's either your bronzer today, but everyone does bronzer, or I try the Pika Libre, but if people don't have Pika Libre, they might not click on it, but they may want to see it. I don't know. So I don't know what the title is going to be. I'm filming this before my other one uh, gets views. My views on the Ultra League battle are decent. 13% um, click-through rate and 3 out of 10 on the views. Uh, so it's about on average yeah it's about on average with the, all the beyond the hypes i did with marowak and drift and stuff like that so it's not it's not bad uh overall and we'll see what the views are this afternoon why am i so talking about that i'm talking about that because we have two leagues that people generally do not like this week ultra league is very very tough for most people to get the xls um and this cup is dominated also by two xl pokemon uh, so if you don't have those XL Pokemon, you are potentially in trouble. So what are people playing this week? I had a lot of comments saying, I'm just taking this week off already. Between this and the state of the game, people are just like, nah, I'm good. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what people are going to be playing. I'm going to basically just go based on my views. I am I got my eye on the other YouTubers to see what their thought process is. And right now, everyone has put out just Ultra League teams. Yeah, so I'm just looking at like Purple Kyogre, Home Slice, Yonkus, um, have all put out Ultra League teams on this league turnover. Um, so we'll see. This will be our first, my, yes, tomorrow afternoon will be my first, um, I mean, yesterday afternoon will be my first look at whether people click on this cup because the top teams in the discussion there was not clicked on uh just the youtube things right because i want to bring you guys content that you guys care about um i will just be playing ultra league this week i have this team and one more with the diggers b drapion that i alluded to in my yesterday video so you'll see at minimum two more of these uh but you got um i guess the ultra league will be in the morning so this morning i posted a verizian double poison team um, and I'm going to test other Pokemon in the Ultra League, uh, and then we'll combo based on views, what I'm seeing, what you guys want to see. Anyways, that is it. Um, let me know what you are playing. Let me know. Um, yeah, just let me know what else is going on and if there's anything that I need to know or you want to tell me. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Um, and <laughs> I'm looking at the time. Uh, the one also thing about Little Cup versus Ultra League is so you'll see my video um uh, yesterday morning had eight or nine battles and was 23 minutes long and this video had 10 battles and was when i stopped talking 17 minutes long and it's because these battles just like if you're yeah if you want to play this week and you just want to get through stuff little cup will shave a ton of time off your gameplay so just keep that in mind if you want quick battles. Little cup it is. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.